Okay, let's chat about creating a resistance training program for a beginner, intermediate, and advanced athlete or you know, trained individual. One thing to note while watching this video, you'll see a ran you'll see randomly these different exercises performed by yours truly. Thank you, thank you. No need to clap. But they are in a se sequence that we will discuss later that I'm hoping subconsciously sticks in your brain. So there's seven steps to creating a resistance training program, and we will discuss each one, though some a little bit more detail than others. First, we need to do a needs analysis. Okay, This is where you will assess the sport that the athlete needs to get better at and create a training regimen from that, as well as assess the athlete to see what improvements they need to make and what they should focus on. For instance, an athlete may be a beginner, having really only trained about one to two days per week, they may be intermediate, having only really trained two to three days a week, or they may be advanced, in which they may have been training greater than three or four days per week. So, moving on to step two. This requires picking the right exercises. Everyone should do cleans and squats, but not every athlete should do bench press. Think of the exercises that will benefit the athlete the most. Again, this is on you. There is no black and white, okay? Here's what you should do no matter what. Okay, you have a lot of free range on this. So, you know, be smart about it. So, step three is training frequency. So, how many days a week are they going to train? A beginner will go about two to three days a week, intermediate three to four days a week, advanced about four to seven days a week. We'll discuss this more in periodization, but depending on the season the athlete is in and how many days they should be in the weight room training. The off season will be, you know, four to six days. Preseason three to four, in season one to three, and postseason or active rest about zero to three days. Um, so as you can see, <clears throat> depending on the athlete's level as well as season, it'll determine how many days a week they're in the weight room. Now step four. Again, I don't know why this isn't part of step two, but once you pick the exercises, again being smart about it, you need to place them in the right order. This is where that order thing is important. Exercises, exercises should be placed in the order of power or technical lifts, like a snatch or clean, then core exercises, like a squat, deadlift, or basically any multi-joint exercises, okay? and then assistance exercises, like the bicep curl or knee extension. These are primarily one joint involved exercises. So again, core or power and technical lifts, your core exercises will be next, and then will be your assistance or accessory lifts after that. Now, step five is determining training loads and repetitions. You'll see we have a 1RM continuum, basically saying that, okay, for example, 80% of someone's 1RM, one rep max, the 80% is intensity, someone should be able to perform eight repetitions. This is a very easy method to follow, however, we can't always have athletes train at these intensities and reps. 80% for 8 reps means that that 8th rep will be really, really, really tough and they may even fail that rep. Training like this all the time will eventually result in overtraining and decrease power output. Mix it up a little bit, okay? Do 80% for 5 reps. Be creative with your programming, okay? Now, depending on our goals for the athlete, we will prescribe different intensities. If we're aiming to increase strength, the load should be greater than or equal to 95% of one R, someone's 1RM with a goal of performing less than or equal to 6 reps. Lift heavy and you will get stronger. If the goal is hypertrophy, we should be in the you know 67 to 85% range, performing 6 to 12 reps, meaning our volume just increased. Or if our goal is muscular endurance, which really, besides cross country, longer track runners, muscular endurance, okay, the intensities are pretty low, okay, we should be less than or equal to 67%, performing greater than 12 reps. Again, not too many programs uh, do that, but if we are trying to improve muscular endurance, more than 12 reps. Okay, now power exercises are a different story. Snatch, clean, clean and jerk, okay? At 80 to 90 percent of, say, a clean, we should be performing one to two reps, and at 75 to 85 percent, we can have the athlete perform three to five reps. 
These are highly complex movements and should not be performed for high reps as fatigue may set as fatigue may set in, which would hinder form. That's again why these lifts are done first, because if we're fatigued trying to perform, say, a snatch, okay, and the bar falls on someone's head because they're too tired to hold it over their head, that's you know just not a not a good thing. Not a good thing that's happening there. Now, step six is volume. We need to understand that volume and load are inversely related, meaning as volume increases, it intensity decreases, and vice versa. We can assess, assess volume two ways. The volume load method equals weight lifted times reps, or the rep volume method, and you can just count the number of reps. That way is a lot easier. We can nip, manipulate the load by reps, but also by the number of sets performed. If we know our goal reps for strength, hypertrophy, endurance, and power, this is very easy. Okay, so now it's how many sets should I prescribe? Okay, PS, the sets that I'm about to tell you do not include warm up sets. So for strength, two to six sets, hypertrophy, three to six sets, endurance, two to three sets, and power, three to five sets. If you're wondering how many warm up sets you should do, roughly anywhere between you know three to five warm up sets. You could have them go from reps of five, three, one, and then have them start hitting their uh, prescribed sets. So now we have a range of sets and reps you can work with. Just remember intensity and volume as you do not want to overtrain your athlete. Lastly, step seven, pretty simple, it's rest time. To produce maximal strength and power, rest period should be two to five minutes. Hypertrophy, 30 seconds to 1.5 minutes or one and a half minutes. And endurance should be less than or equal to 30 seconds.